Welcome to the Pharmacist's Voice Podcast, Episode 231. I'm the host, Kim Newlove. My guest today is Dr. Donna Bartlett, and we'll be discussing her book, MedStrong, Shed Your Meds for a Better, Healthier You, Aging Well Through Deeper Scribing. If you're new to the Pharmacist's Voice Podcast, welcome. Again, my name is Kim Newlove. I'm the host. I'm a pharmacist by training, but I'm not in clinical practice anymore. I am a voice actor and a podcast host. I graduated from the University of Toledo College of Pharmacy with my BS Farm in 2001. Among other things, I narrate audiobooks for pharmacists. If you have a project in mind, whether it's an audiobook, a medical narration project, or something podcast-related, contact me through my website, thepharmacistvoice.com. Let me tell you a little more about my guest, then we'll dive into the interview. Dr. Donna Bartlett is a board-certified geriatric pharmacist licensed in Massachusetts. She earned her BS Pharm and PharmD degrees from Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences University in Boston. Currently, Dr. Bartlett is an associate professor of pharmacy practice at her alma mater, Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences University, and she oversees an internal medicine clinical site at Health Alliance Hospital in Lemonster, Massachusetts. Dr. Bartlett has over 15 years' experience as a clinical pharmacist and over 20 years of retail experience. What are her areas of interest and what does she teach about? Her area of expertise as an educator and her areas of interest as a pharmacist include polypharmacy, deep prescribing, geriatrics, medication access and affordability, falls prevention, adherence, and community outreach. Now comes one of my favorite parts about Dr. Bartlett. She is a fellow podcaster. She hosts podcasts for the American Society of Consultant Pharmacists, specifically the Senior Care Pharmacist podcast. In addition, she has her own website dedicated to deprescribing. The address is donnabartlett.com. That's D-O-N-N-A-B-A-R-T-L-E-T-T dot com, donnabartlett.com. Without further ado, here's my interview with Dr. Donna Bartlett, author of MedStrong, Shed Your Meds for a Better, Healthier You, Aging Well Through Deprescribing. Hi, Donna. Welcome to the Pharmacist's Voice podcast. How are you today? I'm great, Kim. How are you? And thank you so much for having me. I'm great. I always love talking to pharmacist authors. Thanks for being part of my pharmacist authors series. This is exciting. Yes. And thank you for thinking of me too. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, it's my pleasure. Now we're going to talk about MedStrong today. Can you tell me what's this book about? Yeah, so MedStrong, Shed Your Meds for a Better, Healthier You, is just that, right? It's about reducing unnecessary and inappropriate medications, especially in our older adults. So what I like to say is people have had their medications on board for years, maybe even decades, and they made it, right? They're in their 80s, 90s, and they're still taking the same meds. So we have to be rethinking these meds and thinking about, is it still necessary? Is it still appropriate? Or have they outlived the benefit? And is it causing issues now? So we're trying to take a critical look at medications that people take and having people get on board with it too, having um, actual patients and caregivers to to think about this. Yeah. What you're talking about sounds like deprescribing, right? Absolutely. So deprescribing and um, which we have to really be thinking about is either stopping, reducing, or switching a medication to a safer alternative. So really any one of those three things is considered deprescribing. It doesn't mean, oh, take everything away, of course. Um, and I think that there's a misconception of that, especially um, for patients thinking, oh, you know, giving up on me and things like that. It's a, it's a new way of thinking about medicines and having these conversations. And so people aren't on board yet. We, we're trying to start to get prescribers on board and even pharmacists um, thinking more about unnecessary medicines and trying to take the time and then introduce the concept to patients and even trying to work with providers. Uh, but we know that these um, deprescribing also needs to be 
an education for patients and for caregivers. They need to know how to. So part of the book features a five-step medication optimization plan to help people wrap their head around it, have a tool, and be able to take steps in um, in one through five steps, and they can work with their providers and make way through this book and hopefully optimize their medicines because that's what we really want to do. We want to deprescribe to optimize. Awesome. I love a good checklist. I love having a plan. I love a guide with a plan, and you're definitely that person. That's great. <laughs> awesome. Now, how'd you get so smart about this stuff? I mean, how'd you become a subject matter expert about deprescribing? So I have, and I think a lot of pharmacists can say this is, you know, you work with a lot of older adults in pharmacy. And ever since I began pharmacy, I just remember talking to so many people and they were asking me about their medicines or I'd make suggestions for them. I've done many brown bag events. I worked an outreach program and helped many, many older adults with understanding their meds. Um, doing med reviews, and also looking at their med costs and trying to um, help them with the Medicare Part D plan selection, for example, or trying to make selections according to formularies that they had to use with their different insurances. So with all of those years of experience and going to pharmacy school, working in retail, then the pharmacy outreach program. I then went on to um, become a doctor of pharmacy and I received my PharmD. And right when I got that, I immediately sat for the board certification for geriatric pharmacy because I knew that, oh my gosh, this was in 2010. And just looking at what was knocking on our world's door was the baby boomers, they're going to be getting older. They need to know this. We we have a, you know, smart baby boomers now <laughs> that are in the, you know, 65 and older and they're caring for people. And so many people are saying, I'm intelligent. Why don't I know this? Or where's this information when I would talk to them? And I could almost see in my own family, I'm the youngest of five. And I could see that some of my siblings who don't have a medical background, they would be asking me questions or I'd think about, could they navigate this? Do they understand it? What if I wasn't helping out mom or dad? Could they help out mom or dad? So I really started to think about this book and this book concept really for people like my siblings <laughs> and and the people that were coming to me and asking questions and saying, why don't I know this? Or where's this information for me? So all of that together really made me think about what I teach people and what I talk to them about and what I counsel them with is really in this book. So um, so that's where, where the concept really came around. And you know, quite honestly, Kim, I have to say that I really wanted to take a sabbatical too. And I wanted a great project. And this all just came together and just hit me one day and I started writing feverishly about all my ideas for this book. And, you know, um, a few years later, um, it's here. Wow. You took your experience and your passion. And by the way, congratulations on the post back farm D. Not everybody does that. I'm <laughs> still, I still only have the, the BS farm, but yeah, I love Which how you funny. combined all that. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's been a road for sure, um, but an exciting one. And you know, we're we're all constantly learning. And um, but we also, I love telling people, you know, oh, just about their medicines and if what they're taking is appropriate and why they might be feeling that particular way. So many older adults love to blame things on age too. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm tired all the time. I must be getting old. And I'm like, oh, it could be a medicine you're taking. <laughs> so, you know, how, opening people's eyes to this idea that it could be your medicine that you've been taking for 20, 30 years, which worked, it was appropriate, but now not so much. Right. Now you were talking about this book being maybe appropriate for your siblings who aren't pharmacists, right? Yeah. So I've got to ask, who's the audience for this book? Yeah. So um, it's it's funny, Kim, because it's really seeped through a lot of different spaces, if you will. But my goal was to make this book readable for 
older adult patients and caregivers. So I wanted to make certain that the healthcare consumer was being educated, that they had a tool to feel comfortable to have conversations with their providers, for example. How many times have you heard someone say, oh, um, how do I couldn't talk to my doctor about that. I can't question my doctor or if, you know, I'm taking it because they keep giving it to me. Of course I must need it. So I've heard my grandma say yeah, all those things. Right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a whole list of, you know, things I hear people say all the time. <laughs> and, um, so, you know, thinking about this and it, it, just taking a new approach, And then also, Kim, I'm sure you've heard too, you have to be your own self-advocate, right? Who's watching, you know, who's going to watch out for me kind of thing. I, and so it's funny how these kind of clash and, but I want people to be the, their best advocate and feel that they can talk to their providers. So in the book too, I have things such as um, what to what to ask when you're at the pharmacy, what to ask at the primary care, what to ask a specialist. Are you hospitalized? Are you in a rehab? Um, so thinking about all these areas, the questions change a little bit. So giving people the tools that they need in order to have good healthcare conversations and not just say, oh, I'm taking it because I was told to, or I must still need it because they're still writing the prescription. I really wanted folks to have a tool to use. What I've found is not only are caregivers and providers super excited about this, but a lot of our our peers too, um, we're not in the baby boom generation necessarily. However, um, people see the writing on the wall too. I have a lot of um, friends that have read the book and they said, you know what, I was thinking about this for my parents kind of thing. And then I thought, wait, why am I taking this med? Or, you know, how long have I been on this for myself kind of thing? And they said, I had a conversation with my doctor and I'm not taking it anymore. So it's really doing the job that I wanted to do in being proactive because why be on all these things until the hospitalization, until we fall, until the traffic accident that we might have caused as an older adult? So thinking about those areas, I want this proactive approach to occur versus, oh, let's be reactive. You're in the hospital now and we have to try to make sense of all of this. So I love that that's happening. My students that I have, they just keep saying, we all need to learn this. We all need to know about this de-prescribing. We're, we're taught how to and what's needed for and you know how to increase the medicine and things like that. And they're like, we don't think about this in pharmacy school. And then you hear a medical residents saying the same thing. So there's a lot of areas that I'm finding um, this book has been welcomed. Even um, nurses or those that are working with older adults, such as um, social care providers and um, visiting nurses as well. So lots of great places, uh, PAs and NPs. I've had geriatrics group even reach out to me and ask me about some particular cases too. So it's it's really exciting. <laughs> it's really exciting to see all these people who are interested. When you write a book, you need to have an audience that you're writing it for, right? Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you started off by writing it for patients, for everyday people mm-hmm. and caregivers. Mm-hmm. What ends up happening is if you have a hit, you have a hit. And healthcare workers like nurses, pharmacists, pharmacy students, et cetera, are going to pick it up and find value in it too. So congratulations on creating a book that has value for more than one audience. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And could I trouble you to read a little excerpt of the book for me, please? I bet my audience would love to hear a little bit. Oh, that's great. Of course. (laughs) So in the chapter Deprescribing in a Prescribing World, there's a section called Changing the Culture. The growing evidence for the benefits of deprescribing in health outcomes, quality of life, and cost containment calls for a cultural change that will expect deprescribing to be integrated into the process the moment a medication is prescribed. Lifelong medications should be a thing of the past. 
Instead, providers should establish a time span to review medications in either continue therapy or stop therapy as part of the healthcare protocol. Adding a commitment to deprescribing should be considered in every patient encounter. Deprescribing does not mean healthcare providers give up on their patients, stop all their medications, and stop prescribing for preventative purposes. Instead, deprescribing is another way of managing risks and benefits while considering many factors that influence good medicine. It takes skill to look at a patient's health changes and realize the moment when a medicine is no longer efficacious, or when it begins to pose an unacceptable risk or burden. Currently, there is minimal professional guidance to help healthcare providers know when to stop medications or how to determine whether harm may occur over time if medications are or are not stopped. Studies are necessary to evaluate these outcomes, but who should be responsible for studying these factors? Will a manufacturer be on board with studying the best ways to stop medications? Should we have both prescribing information and deprescribing information for all medications? What about the patient goals within these guidelines? When is it time to stop a medication for a patient? Do we wait for the hospitalization, the fall, the adverse event before we intervene? Perhaps there needs to be a deprescribing treatment plan within the treatment guidelines, but further study is needed before that can be done. Healthcare providers do not want to remove medications that are providing benefit and certainly do not want to swing the pendulum from overtreatment to undertreatment. Taking small steps, reevaluating, and monitoring the patient throughout the prescribing process does take time, but allows for intervention if necessary. Also recognize that in the process of deprescribing, no change in how the patient is doing can be a good outcome which is an odd idea for medical professionals accustomed to trying to affect a change. But a patient who stops taking a medication and experiences no change in a condition may very well be counted as a successful deprescribing outcome. Many medications are intended for chronic, indefinite use. However, labeling a medication as a lifetime medication can be inappropriate. As suggested in the Reducing Inappropriate Polypharmacy article, medications should be labeled best before and then reevaluated for continuation after the date. When counseling patients, healthcare providers can tell them that certain medications may need to be taken indefinitely, but also warn them that there may be a time when discontinuation is warranted. Providers and patients alike can use the MedStrong Annual Physical Med Checklist. It's a figure that is also in Appendix A of the book to make this process easier. Each line includes a checkbox to deprescribe or continue to help foster the idea of thoughtfully reviewing all medications and considering whether it's time to deprescribe. Changes to medication reviews in hospitals could benefit patients. At most emergency departments and hospitals, medication reviews are generally referred to as med rec or medication reconciliation. The end product is usually an updated list of medications a patient may have been taking prior to the hospital visit. Ideally, this list would be used to provide a true medication review, although that would require a cultural shift at most hospitals. Changing med rec to med rev and promoting a routine deprescribing process will require more time and attention but such a change could result in better patient outcomes and reduced readmissions. How can healthcare providers work toward a true med-rev system? The process and approaches described in this chapter offer good starting points. Another way to jumpstart the deprescribing process is to honestly examine the difficulties and address the barriers for both patients and healthcare providers. As we have seen, the benefits of deprescribing can include a lower pill burden, fewer side effects in drug interactions, optimization of medications, potential reduction of fall risks, geriatric syndromes, inappropriate medications, hospitalizations due to medication adverse events, and healthcare costs, and improved patient satisfaction, adherence to medications, and quality of life. With so many benefits, it seems like deprescribing would be an easy sell to everyone involved. Unfortunately, the barriers are just as abundant 
Let's review those barriers and examine how the barriers could be addressed and changed. Nicely done. Thanks for sharing that. Boy, you are a thought leader on this topic of deprescribing. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. It's definitely not something they talked about 22 years ago when I was in pharmacy school. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I, think, I feel like people are just now inventing the best practices for it. Would you agree right? with that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It didn't really show up in actual medical literature until 2003 was the first time deprescribing was even mentioned. So it's still pretty young <laughs> to be thinking about it in these terms. Right. And then for it to be new to us as pharmacists, just think about how new it is to our patients. Mm -hmm. You know, they're learning right along with us just a couple steps ahead. (laughs) (laughs) Now, what's the number one reason why a patient or a caregiver should read this book? I think it helps put perspective. It doesn't place any blame anywhere, but it shows that we all have to work on this. So for example, the first part of the book talks about polypharmacy and it really shares the responsibility that we all have for perpetuating over medication, for example. So, you know, the typical scenario in the culture that we're in is you don't feel very well or there's some issue going on. You go to the doctors, they prescribe something. And then a new problem arises. You go to the doctors, they prescribe something. So, and we expect it. It's like, of course, you're going to give me a medicine because something doesn't feel right, or there's a problem, or blood work is off. We're in this culture, and it's, you know, patients expect to be healed, right? Or to take something to help them. Prescribers want to make people feel better. So they're doing it in prescribing things to help a patient. Um, so, so there's that dynamic. But then you have the whole healthcare system too. And so when you're switching around formularies, for example, with insurance companies, that gets kind of messy. When there's prior authorizations or step therapy, you know, you get a fail on this before you can go to this when, you know, maybe the doctor's onto something that, oh, you know, oxybutynin is not appropriate for this patient. We really need to go for the, um, for the newer um, urinary incontinence products that do not... Um, cause confusion and falls and all these other things that uh, we have with the anti-muscarinics. When we're thinking about that, does somebody really need to fail on on oxybutynin? Do they really need to fall first? Um, Seems kind of ridiculous, right? (laughs) So um, so in thinking about that, I, I really want people to learn about the system and learn about polypharmacy and what it is and look at their list and going, wow, I take a lot of meds. Like I'm taking five or more and understanding that that could be a problem and everything counts, right? So we talk about OTCs and we talk about the supplements and herbals too. And, you know, everything counts. People say, oh, I take, I don't take any medicines, but I take a lot of herbals or I take a lot of vitamins. Well, that can be an issue too. So, um, so people end up, you know, not necessarily feeling great with all those you know, wonderful natural products because they could be interacting just like medicines can. That's like the polypharmacy side. And then I want people to learn about deprescribing, that there's a process that they can engage in and be a part of and learn. So I really like that idea of the five-step process. So I want people to understand that there's a process for them, that they can use these tools. And then not to be scared of it. You can always go back and take a medicine if you need to. And I think that that's important too. People are nervous to make a change, but it's not like if you need it, you can't go back on it. It's, <laughs> it's not just a one-way road. So, so thinking about that, and but also understanding that um, there's a lot of barriers we put up. It seems easy, or it seems like, why would I be prescribed something that you know I don't need? It's because you're attached to this medicine and <laughs> we're having these conversations and you're going, no, I'm not comfortable with that. Um, so, so there's a lot of factors going on. We learn about the health system with like auto refills and do you understand what's really in the bag when you have your auto refills provided for you? Are there meds in there that you really have stopped, but you're still getting and maybe it's confused now? thinking that, oh, I maybe I do need to take this medicine. So there's a lot of issues that the book presents to people. 
and to caregivers, and I want them to feel empowered and able to look at these areas and go, okay, here's polypharmacy. I want to be able to de-prescribe. What are the barriers and what am I getting into? And am I, do I have to rethink the way I'm approaching this? That leads me into one of my last questions here. It sounds like you provide perspective and education, but what's the number one thing you want them to do with the information, the perspective and the education? I really want them to share it, (laughs) if not for themselves, for somebody else. A lot of folks will also say, oh, I don't take anything. But like, I bet you know someone who does. So I want the conversations to start. I want people to start asking, do I still need this? Is this important? If it is, great, take it. I think we all have medicines that um, are important to us, that are keeping us healthy and keeping us thriving. But um, to ask the questions and to be thoughtful and rethink and not just assume that everything is fine because no one's brought anything up. So I just want that awareness to be there. And I want people to feel comfortable with de-prescribing conversations and just asking, is this still appropriate for me? I love it. I think this book would have really helped my grandma that I mentioned earlier. She's now deceased, but I remember her asking me while I was in pharmacy school, what's this for? And I would ask, Grandma, don't you know what your medicine's for? And she said, no, I just take it because the doctor prescribed it for me. I don't ask questions. But you know what? If she had had this book, I think you basically would have told her to ask questions. Mm -hmm. You would have told her to ask questions. And I think she would have asked those questions. And she would have felt empowered to make better decisions. And I think her health ultimately would have been better than what it was. Yeah. One quick comment about that, Kim, too, is there was a med review that I had done and I was talking to the caregiver, this woman's daughter, and I followed up with her at a a later date after the review. And she says, it feels so good to fill my mother's pillbox and know what I'm doing is appropriate. And she said, I never felt that way before. And after talking to you, I feel that I'm doing the right thing, that she's on the right medicines. I thought that was great. I love the perspective. Yes. It feels good when we get it right, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast today to talk about your book, MedStrong. And for my listeners who are interested in buying this, where can they find it? Yeah. So a couple of places, of course, Um, really, I want to say anywhere, but it is on Amazon. And um, it's also, you can also go to my website, DonnaBartlett.com with more information there. The website is dedicated to deprescribing and also geared for caregivers and um, providers too, both alike. And the other thing that you can go to Ingram Spark, um, also you can have uh, orders go through uh, a bookstore too. So it is um, available so that libraries can order them and um, bookstores can order them. So it, either through um, Amazon or even at your favorite bookstore, you should be able to get it. And every pharmacy school should have a copy too, right? Absolutely. That's that's my hope. Um, and I would love it for all of the healthcare curriculums too. So no matter what someone is learning, I, you know, physical therapy, even they're working with people. Are they, you know, falling over themselves? It could be a medicine, right? (laughs) So it doesn't matter what healthcare work you're in. I think it's, it's a valuable tool. Absolutely. And this is available in print. So physical copies of the book are available, but I understand you also have the ebook available. Is that right? Yes. That's true. And that, again, available on my website and Amazon. Awesome. I'll put links to those in the show notes. And listen, I love audiobooks. And I know that you have some ambitions to maybe narrate this. Would you like to comment about that? Yes, I am. It's the next thing I definitely want to be doing with this book. I can't wait to start this project and get it going. What I love is to 
have it in any format that can help people and can be distributed to them. So I know so many people are using audiobooks now and listening to them. So I'm I just am too excited to be able to have that format available for folks. Well, if you go through with it, I am just cheering you on here from Ohio because, hey, listen, I know a lot of older people have vision problems, and I don't know how much that generation, the 65 plus, is into audiobooks, but you definitely reach a broader audience with audio, and I am so totally cheering you on here from Ohio. So good luck with that, and can't wait to see how it turns out. Thank you so much, Kim. Really appreciate your time today. Yep. My pleasure. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap this up? So um, just keep the conversation going. And anyone who has listened to this, um, start talking deprescribing with other providers, with patients. Um, Provide the book. Let them know about about MedStrong. And let's all be MedStrong. Deprescribe to optimize. I love it. Thanks for being with me here today, Donna. You take care. Thanks. You too, Kim. Great interview, just a couple of comments as we wrap this up. First of all, Dr. Bartlett is helping to create best practices for deprescribing here in the United States, and I really appreciate her being on the show today to talk about this important topic. If you're a U.S. pharmacist, you may already be finding ways to incorporate deprescribing into your practice. If not, pick up the book and start learning today. Second, If you're listening to this and you're an educator from a school or college of pharmacy, pick up a copy of MedStrong and consider how to include deprescribing into your curriculum this school year, if you haven't already. The benefit to patients and caregivers is clear, and pharmacists are well-positioned to make an impact through deprescribing. Students have an opportunity to, I guess you could say, grow up with deprescribing and we can all make it a standard of care during their careers. Let's teach the young ones. They are going to grow up with this. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you for listening to episode 231 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. Please visit thepharmacistvoice.com to read the show notes. In the show notes, you'll find a link to MedStrong, Shed Your Meds for a Better, Healthier You, Aging Well Through Deprescribing by Dr. Donna Bartlett. You'll also find her social media links, my social media links, and more. If you know a clinician, patient, or caregiver who might like this episode, share it with them. And if you like this podcast, please subscribe to or follow the Pharmacist Voice podcast on your favorite podcast player and YouTube to get each new episode right when it comes out. I'll be back on Monday, July 17th with an interview with Dr. Frida Wiley. Dr. Wiley will be talking about her book, Telecommuting Psychosis, From Surviving to Thriving While Working in Your Pajama Pants. Plus, we'll touch on three books that she has in development. Thanks for listening today. I'll talk to you on Monday.